Hello and welcome to the prayer garden at St Richard's. Mm, something's not quite right. Oh, I know what it is. Last time I did a video outside, I needed my raincoat and my brolly. I think I probably don't need that today. In fact, I probably need these. Uh, but I'll take them off because otherwise it's going to be a bit odd looking at me in my glasses for the next few minutes. So, um, I'm out here in the prayer garden because I wanted to share with you some exciting ideas, plans that we have for this space. One of the things that we learned during the pandemic is that we have actually got outside space uh, around our church building and that became really important to us when we couldn't meet in the building. So we even had services out here. We had a communion service on more than one occasion and we even used the space just in front of the vicarage for worship too. And... Um, then we noticed as we were outside in this space that it's also got the key thing about being visible to our community. So people noticed us when we were singing Amazing Grace out in the building. I remember one day parents stopping uh, to sort of watch and even join in as they were on the way to pick up children from the school. We know that this is visible because of the school drop-offs, both to our preschool and to our primary school. And of course, because right behind me is the route, the road into Oak Avenue Nature Reserve and beyond. So it's, it's actually quite a public space um, that draws attention to the church. And with our wild flower border last year, that also really caught people's imagination and was something that was talked about, certainly amongst the dog walking community, uh, which I'm now part of. And the flowers are coming back for this year. Do, do have a look next time you're here. Our building is multi-purpose, something for which I am extremely thankful and extremely thankful for all of you who supported and enabled that to happen. Uh, and it really comes into its own. For those of you here at Jubilee Coffee Morning, you would have seen the church full, maybe 80 people, at least 80 people here during that morning. Um, and the flexibility of the space enables us to do that. And we had nearly, I don't know, 45 people here this morning for our regular coffee morning. It's something that's really taking off. One of the limitations is no access to secure outdoor space. And yet we have this space right outside our church and we can open a door directly into it. So what I want to share with you is um, something that we've been doing some thinking about and imagining how we could use this space, this prayer garden, to be something a little bit more something with a bit more of an intentional purpose and actually something that we can use all year round. So I'm going to take you a little walk around and ask you to imagine with me what it could be like. So my first stop is going to be, I'm sure it's your favourite feature and mine, <laughs> are these big grey metal gates. Now they obviously serve a really important purpose and so we need them. But it occurred to us that if we moved them back to be level with the church building, so I'm just going to show you that there. Then actually what that does, apart from moving it out of the sight line, so when you're in the building you won't see the gates, and we can paint them green so they're the same as the other external gates here. But actually what it does is it gives us some space in front of the gates before the grass starts for hard standing. So we could have a patio. And that would then enable us to be able to use this space all year round, and not just in the summer or the fine weather. So a patio coming in front of the, the gates that have been put in their new position. And then of course you'll be familiar, many of you, with the very uneven path that we have. So another thing we can do is actually to extend the patio and to have a path that is level and that leads out of the prayer garden and into the, um, the car park, which of course is the next problem because this space cannot just be freely used because as you can see and as you are aware, it opens straight out onto the car park and the road. So coffee morning this morning would have been fantastic to have had water play out here, sand play, messy play, um, but we couldn't, couldn't do it because it's not safe. But it could be made safe. And one of the things we want to do is we want to keep this space flexible would be to have a fence but the fence to not just be a solid fence and a solid gate, but I'm imagining a fence with raised beds in which we can grow things, whether that's vegetables, herbs, flowers, others from the community can join in with that, and a gate that can be secured when we need it secure, but can be left open as an invitation to use this space, this prayer garden, this community prayer garden at other times. Maybe just to have, I don't know, 
lunch with a friend or a cup of coffee or for parents waiting to pick children up to have a moment of solitude. Maybe we can uh, embellish the space with words of scripture or artwork or something that tells the story of the creator God, the invitation that as church we're wanting others to come closer and to know Jesus like we know Jesus. We have the community recycling bins behind us, really well used, but of course, understandably, sometimes bits of litter and things collect behind them. You might remember the photo I took not long after being here of the shoots growing up, the new growth we were expecting and we are seeing, praise God, but also the rubbish that gets in the way. So one idea, which I think is a really good one, is instead of having the open chain link fence immediately behind the recycling bins, we actually have fence panels which will stop that casual, if you like, rubbish just murking its way through into this space. The chain link fence is really important. Some of it needs replacing. Um, and so in order to we, we replace it like we'd like because it gives us that amazing view into, the, into nature and into our community beyond. But also, it more importantly allows our community to see us. So I wonder if you can imagine a community prayer garden where people are invited to be, where people are invited to garden, where people are invited to worship, whether that's in solitude prayer or if that's a a service of Holy Communion or something else, a place where we can play together as well and where our children can be safe. And of course, we will need financial support to enable this to happen. And so I made this little video to say, I am so blessed, we are so blessed as a church for all that you give, not just in terms of money, but including money, which has enabled our building to be the multi-use space that it is. And I would love us to be able to use this space outside in the same way. There'll be an opportunity from this Sunday, if you would like to give specifically to this project, whether that's a one-off gift, whether that's a commitment to give a little each month, that would be amazing. Whether it's a little or a lot, it will make a difference. And full disclosure, a couple of weeks time, 3rd of July is our annual gift day. So we don't talk about money a huge amount. I hope we talk about it mostly in the context of thankfulness because that is where it always should be. And I hope nobody will feel under pressure to give financially. We are well aware of the times in which we live. But if you can, and if you would like to, then we would really welcome your contributions to enable this church to continue to grow and to continue to be a place, a beacon of hope in this community here in Hanworth. God bless and see you soon. I'm back to get my shades now. Bye.